Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode 22. This episode is my friend Bill Porter. Now, Bill uh, is a three-time world champion martial artist. That's probably the coolest title I've ever heard of anything ever. Uh, Bill and I met on the set of Tethered, actually. And fun fact, there's a there's a little dinner scene, if you've seen the movie, um, and there's <laughs> there's spaghetti, and Bill actually cooked that spaghetti. So it's a fun little a little bit of trivia but in this episode we talk about uh we talk about working on tethered uh how he got his start in martial arts uh the benefits of combining different styles of combat uh his his movement into film from competition in martial arts his road to winning the world championship and then he auditioned to be a power ranger that is so cool that is so cool. He goes in depth of the whole process from when he first heard about the casting call all the way up until uh, the end. Uh, it's a great, great story. Lots of fun. Bill's great, and I think you're really gonna you're really gonna dig it. You're gonna dig this episode. So without further ado, the interesting podcast episode number twenty two with martial artist Bill Porter. Theme song time. <laughs> think yes maybe maybe testing yes. boom that's crazy so that crazy. pretty much that's what happened and then um you know with my mom being here by fgcu she pretty much just like you know this is really cool college you should come check it out yeah so i came down here i checked it out um and i just really enjoyed it um uh, it's just like it, it almost looked like a resort i was like this is not college, right <laughs> you know like so but i really enjoyed it and so far like i'm almost done right now i'm kind of in my internship to be okay. like graduated and be done yeah and that's kind of where i'm headed like you know she ended up my mom went from like flipping to like working with investors and like okay. she helps them invest in different things and right now she's helping uh, them invest in movies and films no so way kind of how i got like the in you know dude so i'm pretty excited about that i'm still not really quite sure what i want to do and you sure. know, like i said when i was on set with you guys it really inspired me because you know, with the whole power ranger thing, you know, like... Oh, we'll get into that. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I was a little discouraged because it's like, oh, man, but I, you know, I gave it my yeah. all. And then, like, after, you know, seeing you guys and kind of helping around set and stuff, like, I was just like, man, like, I could do this, like... It's it's cool. I, I, as short amount of time that I've been doing it, it's like once you see it, I feel like it's always there. There's something in you that, like be it an entertainer be it want to work in the entertainment industry i feel like if you want to work in it there's always been something there but it takes an example or like a taste of it to be like no this is actually really really cool yeah and then people go from there because you don't know i mean you were on set it's a cool thing to it be is. like everyone's going around and then there's food and then there's angles and actors getting ready but you don't know that until you've done it you know like making movies is cool but when you get there it's like a machine of like fun you well, know? It is. I remember watching it. I'd be like waiting for like, oh, which scene was I there for? Like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, I see myself in the reflections or, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Like, like, the dinner scene. I made that spaghetti. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> I had to laugh because I was just like, I could see them just kind of like poking at it for a while. Not eating you know? it. Like, I was like, come on, it's good. Right. You know. <laughs> Trust um, me, I made it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm Italian. Come on. Yeah, really. So, but That's it was awesome. very inspirational, you know, and it sure. really inspired me to continue. So. How did you get onto set? Like, what uh, was your Dimitri. answer? Dimitri. Dimitri, okay. We had a class together, uh, rhetorical criticism. Really? And it was just a really good class. We ended up in, like, the same group. And, you know, I was kind of talking to him about, like, the whole Power Ranger thing. And yeah. Pretty much he was just like, dude, that's awesome. Like, I'm filming a movie, you know, with a bunch of really cool people. You should come out and just hang out, you know? Yeah. And he's like, you know, I can't really, like, pay you anything. I was like, that's cool. Like, it doesn't matter to me. Like, just come out and hang out, you know, help us. And I was like, that'd be awesome, you know? Right. So when I came out, you guys were all just amazing. Yeah, Chris cool was piece. really cool, you know. Right? You could see his like dedication and his focus yeah. to the film and just like, you know, even though it's like his first film, you could see he was very professional about it. He knew. Yeah. He knew, that's that was the biggest thing that 
struck me with him and something also where I was like, I don't know if I want to be a director. Because he, like, he's so young. And you wouldn't think, like, that dude had everything on lock. You know, oh, he knew what shot we were like doing. He knew what he wanted. And yeah. And I'm sure he was very stressed. Yeah, oh, but, for sure. you know, you couldn't really <laughs> for tell. Sure. <laughs> for sure. No, so. there were quite a few times I remember where he would just be like, he's like, I wish I had a cinematographer. It's like, I wish more than anything because he's focusing on the shot and trying to direct. Yeah. And that's really hard because you're like, how's the shot looking when you're not focused on the performance for that take? Then you got to go back and redo it a bunch. Yeah. So the fact that he was able to do everything essentially blows my mind and then the movie's good which is even crazier because you'd think with your head in so many different avenues at once like it could very easily be bad for sure you know but you guys did an amazing job like like and i think i saw a few things like i'd watch as you guys would like do like little vlogs you know yeah yeah, yeah, as you guys were doing it and like i'd kind of be bouncing back and forth from chicago to here so i couldn't come all the time sure but it was cool to see like you know from when i was there to how it ended up and then how it yeah. ended up on like the big screen you know like that for sure cool. for sure so yeah that was something that i also wasn't super prepared for was to see what got cut yeah and what takes you i was like wait but we did okay that's an interesting like i'm not gonna spoil it for people who haven't seen it but the big reveal like climax of the movie yeah the way that he went about it about showing it really surprised me i was like that's very interesting because you could just like play the scene out sees it and then runs away yeah but the way that they kind of flashed it and like played with your mind a little so you lean in you're like what is what did he see which was really like seeing in his head yeah yeah you know crazy craziness but you we've mentioned power rangers we're gonna we're gonna get into this (laughs) but but I'd, i'd like to start first when did you start doing martial arts me, I probably started, like, around the time Power Rangers kind of came out, like, 1994, right 1993. Original Mighty Morphin. Um, I was probably, like, three or four, um, and pretty much I just really enjoyed it. And the funny thing about it was my, the first martial arts class I ever took, uh, yeah. Jason David Frank, what? who was the Green Power Ranger, was my what? first martial arts instructor. Are you serious? Yeah, he came in, to, like, he would go and do, like, tours around different dojos. Yeah. And he was there, and that's kind of, like, what initially my mom was like, all right, like, maybe this will get him interested in it. And it did, for sure. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> if you're learning so, from a Power Ranger. <laughs> you know, um, and that was, like, my first class. So wow. technically he was kind of like my first sensei, you know? Yeah. Um, and it was just a fun class. I remember, though, being really, like, kind of angry with my mom, like, little kid angry, you know? Yeah. Because she, like, walked in there, and she's like, well, you know, he's not cleaning up his room. And I'm like, Mom, <laughs> that's my hero. Don't tell him that, right. you know? like He's a power ranger. He has bigger problems. Yeah, you know, like, it was just fun. But that's when I, like, kind of initially got into it. Um, and then pretty much from then on, like, I kind of, like, would go from school to school because a lot of the schools then, like, Good instructors, but not good businesses. Sure. You know, like, you can have a really good instructor, but unless it's, like, a good business, it's hard for them to keep their doors open. For sure. Do you know what I mean? For sure. So, like, I would bounce around, and I did that, and then, you know, like, I, I kind of like to say I'm a good mix between my mom and dad, um, and that kind of helped me be, like, a good martial artist, because my mom was, like, a national gymnast, and oh, my cool. dad came, like, really close to being an Olympic wrestler. Dude. So I'm kind of, like, a little bit, I got the flexibility, and I got, like, the endurance and strength. You right know? on. Like, so it's pretty cool, but it's still a lot of hard work. Well, you know, you absolutely. Gotta maintain it's that It's martial stuff. arts. This yeah. isn't something you just, like, oh, I've been here four days, so I get the next belt, right? Pretty much, yeah. you know. It depends on the school, you know. <laughs> also very true. Some schools are like, well, we are a business, and we'll just sell you belts. And some schools are like, no, like, I want to make you a better person. Yeah. And this is for you, not for me. I remember I did Shore and Rue for, like, two years. And you don't get a white belt at first. They make you earn it. Like, you get no belt. And then it took me, like, three months. <laughs> like, all right, here's your white belt. Now we work on the next one. It was, like, And that's how it insane. should be, though. I and, completely agree. And, you know, like, I, I like the belt systems. Like, the different colors are cool. But, yeah. But it's more for, you know, not to sound bad, it's more for Americans. Like, they for want sure. that instant gratification. Yeah, oh, know? 100%. And for kids, too, it's good. It's yeah. just, like, it's an accomplishment. For sure. Um, for but sure. But, like, I think when you're older, like, and you, like, the belts really don't matter as much. It's more, like, what you're learning. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So, so and then, then for me, like, uh, I did gymnastics when I was younger, too. And cool. So everything kind of, like, spiraled up, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was pretty cool. And then when I was, like, I want to say, like, 19, like, I found Lions Martial Arts Academy, which is in okay. Grays Lake, Illinois. Cool. Um, and that's kind of where I met, like, most of my, like, mentors really like my, okay i have a guru Edie, who she's amazing with uh Eskrima, which is filipino yeah, yeah it sticks um and that's what i'm a world champion in and oh like, cool she's got an amazing story like yeah for her she pretty much was just like not really allowed to compete 
and because she was a girl when she was in the Philippines. So what she did was she like she shaved her head and like no signed up to the way Polish competition and she won and like and then she got pretty good like respect after that. I'd say so. <laughs> um, and then you know I've got my instructor Darius, Master Darius. He's really awesome. He's been like like a second dad to me, just kind of showing me the ropes. Like when I first came there, I was like, you know, I, I want to do martial arts. I want to open my own martial arts school someday. Yeah. And he's been really cool on just letting me like showing me everything you know the ropes like the behind the scenes and sure like martial arts um so it's been pretty cool um and that's pretty much like been my like martial arts home ever since you know sure definitely a lot of good great people that's crazy so. shaved her head and fought in the that's amazing yeah. That's that's so, a movie. It is though, isn't it? Dude, you know she was the original Mulan. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, that's you know? so cool. But she's really cool. She's like 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 a second mom to me. Like I haven't seen her in a while just because I've been here doing school. Sure. But we're always sure. like, hey, like you know, if we ever see like videos of stuff, or we'll send videos back and forth. Like, what'd you think of this technique? I don't know. I thought you could have done this better. Or could've sure. Done that better, you know. We always bounce stuff off each other. And sure. I think that's, that's how you gotta learn. Better, you Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. That's great. So what what style would you say is like your prominent? Because you need to have a bunch. Yeah. Like that's the thing. Like Shorin Ryu, uh, the guy who founded that, went through Japan and like traveled and took bits from here. Like, all right, he got this from jujitsu. He got this from here and kind mm -hmm. of meshed it. Jeet Kune Do is an yeah, amalgamation. It's a mix. You know. So what would you say is your like prominent? Of uh, of course you got to well, do a bunch. For me, and, and you know, I think that's the thing. Like, I think. With instructors like that, you end up with a mix. For but sure. for the instructor, like for me, like I would study martial arts individually. I wouldn't study okay. that mix. Sure. So I would have like just Taekwondo, just Eskrima, just Aikido. Right. But then they mix within you. Smart. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, and you know, a lot of people will say, you know, it's good to study a mix. And, you know, I think it's good to study multiple things at the same time, but study like strictly that. Like, sure. You know what I mean? Like, Today I'm doing Taekwondo, you know, tomorrow I'll do Aikido, you know, right. I think it's good because then you're like fully immersed in it. You're not just trying to pick out one technique. Right. I like this punch from Aikido, yeah. but this kick from Taekwondo is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And like, it's good to do that, but I think you still have to understand like the concepts and the basics. For sure. Of the, the entirety of the style. For sure. You know, and then later, it, like I said, it kind of mixes within you. you know? Right. Like, I notice me sometimes like even during sparring, like I'll be like, okay, well my Taekwondo footwork's not working. You right. know, so then I switch it up, and with my screamo footwork, I'm like a southpaw. You know oh, what I mean? Sure. So it like switches it up. So it makes you very versatile. For sure, for sure. So um, it's it's hard to say what style is best. I think it really oh, depends yeah. on the person. I completely agree. And how they trained in it, and if their technique's good, and it depends who you're, you know, sparring against. Or for fighting sure. Or There's a, a million variables. It is. For you sure. Know? And it's just it's all about your mind and and what you've learned and. For uh, sure. It's just martial arts is definitely something I like. I wish they would put it into schools. I completely you know what agree. I mean? Like I know they have wrestling. They used to have boxing. They got rid of that. But yeah. It's just like, <laughs> like this is like a sport that is very disciplined. That teaches respect. You think they'd put it more into the school system? For sure. So, For sure. But I'd probably say like my main style that I like is the screamer. Yeah. Um, cool. Because I, I, you know, I'm not the tallest guy. I'm but with you. I, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, for me, like uh, I think maybe a couple of years ago it was voted like one of the number one destructive martial arts. Sure. And it's just like you can, I, you can use this microphone with the screamer. You can yeah, use it's you know, a stick, <laughs> empty hands, anything, you know. And it, it, for sure. It's very good flow too. For so. Oh yeah, it's cool. It's very cool. A scream is neat. Um, so, so you did you did martial arts in these dojos for a while. When did you decide to compete? Or was competing always on your mind? It was kind of like always on my mind, but I wanted to wait a little bit. Like so, I kind of competed like throughout my life but like majorly probably when i was like 19 to like 23 cool you know what i mean cool. so and that's kind of when i just started like you know trying out these regional tournaments and then trying out like just different tournaments sure um and for me like i'm like a three-time world champion in stick fighting which is just like out of many different competitions that i've tried it's so fast paced oh sure like, you have to, it's almost like boxing with sticks yeah know? yeah absolutely so you really have to pretty much just like have an amazing cardio you have to have like really good like timing and reaction time sure and super speed yeah helps. <laughs> you know like i, I have to laugh because a few people would call me rapid attack because sure. i just be like you know you have to you got to be in there so for sure it's it's pretty fun but um pretty much when i think i was in 2012 so i was 22 like that's when i won my world championships 
Dude. And then, you know, after that, I was kind of just like, well, college. You yeah, know, right? Like, well, <laughs> back to college, I guess. Um, but I still enjoy it. It's just now, lately, I haven't had much time to go compete because of school. Of course. You know? Of course. Um, but, you know, I'd, I'd like to go back, you know, and try yeah. and compete more. Keep you it know? even numbers. Martial you arts got three, is one of those so. things that, yeah, you know. Yeah. I'd like to move up to an even. For sure. <laughs> for enough. sure. Uh, martial arts is one of those things you can do your whole life. Absolutely. You know, because there's so many different styles. You for know? sure. So. And it is a way of life as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, which is very cool. Uh, no, that's insane. That's insane. I, I remember I, did, I studied kendo for a lot of years. Okay. And I remember the first time I ever saw a kendo tournament. I was like, these matches last like three seconds if it goes long. Yeah. I mean, there's like a pause, and it's real quick, and then it's like, all right, well, you got him in the head. Well done. Well done. Good job, guys. I mean, those you are know? cool, though, you know? And it's because it's, they're supposed to be swords. It's like, well, yeah, technically, you'd quick. be dead. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know? Like exactly. <laughs> That's something with, like, movies, you know? Yeah. When you have a fight in the movies or you have a, 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 a scream a stick fight or a sword fight, like, they last very, very long. Yeah. When in actuality, it's like, if you... If it lasts long, somebody's not doing their job right. Pretty much, you know, you know and like, because um, the screamer translates to knife fighting as well. Sure. And like they're huge in the knife fighting. Yeah. Um, there's so many different like, different ways you've seen it. Like if you watch videos, like you'll see some people holding it like backwards. You'll see some people holding a crumb that, which is like kind yeah. of like the curved shaped blade that they hold upside down that the military really likes to yeah, use yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and it's just interesting because it's just like, and it's funny too because even when I was training hardcore training like i'd watch movies and i'd be like man they're so slow <laughs> you know and yeah. it's like to me that's my gauge it's like For i know sure. i haven't trained in a while if i think they look fast sure you know what i mean sure if yeah. i can't you slow it down there. <laughs> you know um so but movies that's like another thing like i'd love to do fight choreographing and like, yeah you know because a lot of the different styles i know kind of complement each other absolutely you know and it'd be nice to see that on like the big screen have you done any fight choreography um not really not at least just on my own really you sure know, like yeah, if yeah. I shoot something right or like if i'm putting together a demo for like my martial arts school oh so right like i'll right. help them come up with some stuff or like you know i'll be like i'll sit there and watch them and be like no no, no this is what we're gonna do instead like you know grab that scarf we're gonna use you like yeah, defend yeah. against that knife with a scarf or a purse you sure know, like so that kind of stuff I really enjoy doing. I'd like to do it more, but like I said, with school, it's been tough. Sure. But now with, like, this internship, I'm looking to dive more into, like, the film and entertainment industry. Sure. And, and, and kind of go that route of, like, the, you know, the martial arts route. And, and I would like to direct, you know. Yeah, I was about I, to say, it sounds like you got a bit of a directing bone I in there. I do, you know, because especially with the fight choreographing, like, you have to understand the angles the shots are going to be, like. Absolutely. You know. That's okay, half what of a fight better? scene. Okay, well, his leg in this shot looks higher and it looks nicer. Well, if I do it from here, it looks lower and it doesn't look as good. Right, you know? right. And don't and shoot it from the like side. And actually hitting him, <laughs> you know. That's the key, for sure. So. Do you, uh, do you have any favorite martial arts films? Ooh, man, there's, there's too many. There's amazing ones. Um, I know for me, like, I was a huge fan of Jean-Claude Van Damme. Oh, yeah? Um, <laughs> he got the splits? Yeah, you yeah. know. <laughs> Did you know he was going to be the original Predator? What? Yeah, he was slated to be the original Predator, but then he ended up coming to, like, America and was pretty much, he got the role in Bloodsport. Yeah. So then he faked an injury so oh, that no. he would get his movie <laughs> role because, like, in Predator, his face would be covered. Right. Completely covered. That makes so sense. So he was just like, yeah, no. And he's like, I'm hurt. I can't do this. That's funny. So it was kind of interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, Jean-Claude Van Damme is one of my favorite. I like Bloodsport, Kickboxer. They're doing a remake of Kickboxer right now. What? And I think it comes out September 2nd. Oh, that's so, like, like this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I've been pumped. I'm like, come on. Like, when's yeah. it going to be released? Really? Um, I think Bruce Lee's movies, like Enter the Dragon. Crazy that was good. Like, you know, like sure. the OG. Um, trying to think what else. Jeez, there's just so many good martial arts movies. Even like kind of the ones that are like you know like the B rated. You know. Yeah. Like, they're not like the the bo top of the box office, but they're still like really good like stories. There's like a ton of wire work. Yeah. Like Hero. Know. Oh, for sure. Hero's in a beautiful movie. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh, for it's sure. Pretty friggin' sweet. That was sweet. like the one that like inspired many many martial artists. Absolutely. Especially um, that one. There's just such a diversity of weapons in that one. Oh, yeah. You know, you've got the Sword of Destiny, then you've got the deer horn knives, and then you've got, like, all these things. They're amazing. Amazing. I'm a big Donnie Yen fan. Oh, me too. Love I can't Donnie wait Yen. to see him in Rogue One. Oh, my God. Me neither. I'm curious how his character is going to, like, progress and play out. Right? And he's blind. Did yeah. You know that? What? He's well, a he blind. talks a lot about the Force. Yeah. So I'm wondering, like, is he, like, a Jedi? But right? he's just, like, or is he like, just like or what? Or is he, like, uh, like Maz? Yeah. You know, she's Where like, she's I'm not a Jedi, but I know the Force. Yeah. What if he's like that? I think he could be. You know, he's like It'd a pilgrim cool, that relies on the Force to see. Dude, he's got a stick. 
He's got a staff that he's beating up stormtroopers with. Yeah, and they've got laser. I will, I, dude. I'll watch that all day. <laughs> it looks fun though. Like I'm excited to see, it, and I'm excited to see how it like it bridges the gap. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And it's like introducing these characters that you know. It's, we know it's like kind of like outside the family. You know? Yeah. So. I'm pumped, man. I you know you know what I love about Donnie Yen, is. Like Jet Li. Jet Li was very, very good. But when he fought, he was very stoic all the time. Because yeah. that was his thing. You know, when you're fighting, dead face. But Donnie Yen brings so much, like, he's such a good actor as well. So he can bring emotion to the fights and the characters. Like, like expression. Yeah. Like, you, you've seen Ip Man? Yeah. Ip Man's incredible. You know, um, I just saw a movie, like, last week with him. It was called Kung Fu Killer. Okay. Crazy good. It's on Netflix. I'll have to look it up. It's so good. And he plays kind of like an anti-hero at first he the movie starts with him going to like the police station and he's got like a bloody hand he's like accidentally just killed someone yeah so they take him to jail and then two years later people start turning up dead and he's like i know who's doing this and it's like a guy who mastered these martial arts would go after masters of a certain discipline beat them kill them to fight him and it's like a big thing really yeah it's so I'll good it so it's good. like a guy who's really good at boxing so he punches him to death yeah. And this guy was good at kicking, so he kicks him to death. And then grappling and weapons and like it's really, really good. I'll have to check it out. But I mean that looks like it's pretty much sounds like how it was though. Yeah. From absolutely. what history says back in the day. Absolutely. You know? Think about feudal Japan. It's like this is my land, this is yours, and we're gonna kill each other for it. Pretty much. And with you know, Kendo was the whole thing where like if a samurai gets too close for the sword, then you've got your hands. And you've got a keto, you know, exactly. flipping peeps and it's all it all works. It does. You, know? you just got to make it work, right? For sure, for sure. <laughs> and it's like you said, you know, it's, it, it depends on the person. There's it no Because a lot of people, Americans a lot of the time, are like, what's the best martial art so I can learn it and then be the best? It's like yeah. it's not really how that works, you know? It, size has a lot to do with it. Oh, it totally you does. You know? I mean, it I'm 5'8". Totally I'm you know, it's like, uh, how tall are you? Me, I'm like 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, yeah, so we're both shorter than the average. Yeah. You know? And because of that, it's like... Martial arts that take like a super amount of strength to do correctly. It's like maybe not the best one for us. But then there's yeah. Aikido. You know, Aikido is a lot of like using momentum against somebody, and, and you don't and, and you don't have to be energy. big. Yeah, you know, and, and that's the case. You know, for me, like, and that is how I trained. You know, I I remember training with this one really really big guy, and he was like an army ranger, and sure. he would try and show me stuff. And then want me to do it, and it's just like, well, I'm not your size. Yeah, you right. Know, like I you can't. You know, not gonna you know? work for so me. So then I would do something <laughs> different, and he'd be like, oh, okay, like that makes sense for you, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. And absolutely. It's just like, yeah, because you know, I can't like, I'm not like a tank. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, like I'm not just gonna mow these people down. I'm exactly. Gonna, you know, get in, do my strikes, get out. You for know? sure. You're like I like that throw, but you realize I can't throw you, right? Yeah. <laughs> just like, Dude, you're like huge. <laughs> exactly. It's so. it's nice for the sensei to play along when you get them over your shoulder and try to chuck them. But if they don't want to go, they can plant, and you're, they're not going anywhere. Exactly. You know. And then you almost have to do something else. Exactly. You know, like. It's. I always think of that one move where. You know, they'll do, they'll like go for a triangle choke okay. for someone that's way bigger. And it's like, it's not, they're just going to slam you on the ground. Like, it's not going to work. Just fall backwards, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, I remember my dad, um, my dad, like, he'll, he did, he's never talked about it his whole life. He fought in Vietnam and he's been in a lot of scraps in his whole <laughs> life, whatever. And he always taught me because I was really, really small growing mm -hmm. up. I mean, I was like four foot ten when I graduated middle school. Okay. So I went into high school like I was like, well, I guess I'm a dwarf. I mean, it is what it is. And then I hit a growth spurt, and I was like, oh, thank God, <laughs> I hit five foot. <laughs> and he always taught me, uh, incapacitate is the name of the game. He goes, don't play around because if it's an actual fight, you need to treat it like one, and you need to handle your business. Yeah. Do it quickly. Don't mess around. Don't try to do some really cool like, oh, I'm gonna kick you in the head. Like, oh, that's cool. But if it doesn't work, you could be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. You know, you there's break your foot and exactly. end up standing on one foot there as this guy tackles you. Exactly. Right? <laughs> or he sees it and just demolishes you. But he he told me, he goes, here's what you need to do. Hit him in the throat. I was like, that's that's not bad. And it works. It oh, works. it totally does. <laughs> I've had an instructor tell me that, too. He yeah, just, like, drops people real quick. Yeah. It's a, you hit someone in the Adam's apple just right, it doesn't matter how big they are. <laughs> can't breathe, can't fight. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, speaking of fighting. You get into competition. I'm assuming you went through the dojo, signed up? Well, pretty much. It's like, it's kind of like a circuit. Okay. So, like, for me, this was like the, it was WeCAF and GSBA, so Global Stick and Blade Alliance. Beautiful. So, and what they would do is, like, it's, it's kind of like they all know each other, you know, and then sure. they would get together for their schools to fight. Um, and then, like, there's just multiple jo dojos within that discipline around the world. So oh, then they okay. send stuff out, and then they're like, okay, we're going to do a regional tournament, national tournament, you know. <laughs> So it's kind of like, you know, 
I don't know. I like to say because they're really close. Like they're a family, and it's like a lot of them are trained under the same people. Right. But at the same time, like. There's just it's like any style like everyone wants to say they're like my scream is better or my of taekwondo course. is better you know yeah well, that's and been like that since the beginning of oh, time for sure <laughs> and you know like they've got really good competitions um, which is good they hold regional ones pretty much like there's Midwest regional Eastern regional um, over in California they got like their like Southwest regional like different regionals you know sure um, and then you go on to the nationals where everybody who won from those regionals meet. And yeah. after that, then it's like, okay, well, now you're Team USA. You uh, know? Oh, okay. And then you go, you know, I think this last time they had one in the Philippines and one in Hawaii. Sure. So that was kind of cool. When I did it, it was in Las Vegas. Oh, so okay. So it was like, all right, I'm getting to fight in Las Vegas, yeah. you know? Like, so that was kind of cool. Um, but pretty much that's how those ones work. And, you know, I've, I've competed in Taekwondo a little bit, mainly more forms. Okay. Because, like, for, like, my size, there really isn't many people to fight. Sure, um, sure. So... But it was still fun, you know. Like, I was, like, gold medal All-American in forms for Taekwondo. Dude. And, like, um, you know, I fought, like, more, like, um, like hometown tournaments, which were a lot of fun. Like, just, sure. like, because, like, they were more invitational. So it was, like, any different style that could oh, come. Right. And then, like, we're just going to – it'd be, like, sometimes they'd be point sparring. Sometimes it'd be, like, okay, we're just going for two minutes. Let's see what happens. Yeah, you yeah. You know, so those ones are kind of fun, too, you know. Sure. And it is good, you know. The only way you get better is to fight better people or different styles. For sure. You for know? sure. There's no actual losing in the sense that, like, if you lose a fight, you're like, all right, that move got me out so I can learn to that. Exactly. For sure. You know, you all, there's no, like – you know, you're always learning something. Absolutely. You know, even if you, you lost, it's like, okay, well, this is a learning experience. I'm going to know not to step this way this time. Yeah, really. The other <laughs> way, you know. I, so. I, I remember I, I, w I did a sparring match one time with a guy. His name was Josh. And he was like, wait, I mean, he, I did Shorn Roof for t a year and a half, two years, I believe. Okay. It was a while. He did it for like seven. And so we were sparring. And I was like, oh, I'll go for it. Nobody else is doing it. I'll go for it. And... We somehow got locked up in grappling, and he did one move to me. To this day, I don't know what it was. And I somehow got bent backwards, and it hurt real bad. And then he gets up, and the fight's over, and I was like, I have no clue how you did that, so we're just going to have to do it again. Yeah. And so we went again, and he did it again. I was like, I still have no clue how to get out of that. That hurt really bad. I was like, I, mean, I got maybe one more in me. So he did it I mean, and uh, he didn't try to do it. He just, this move worked against me. So we'd spar a little bit. He'd mess with me and then end the fight that way. Yeah. And by the third time, I was like, okay, that really hurts. I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, that mentality of like, even if you lose, learn from it. You're and, like, all right, I like just need to watch my neck. <laughs> too, like, and you do learn from it. And like the best place to practice, you know, and go kind of all out is in the safety of your dojo. Exactly. You know, you want to exactly. get hurt and hit and... Feel sure. the most pain you're gonna feel in the dojo, sure. not when you're in competition. Exactly. You know. Exactly. And I think even a lot of like Olympic people say that too. You yeah. Know? Like you know, I trained harder off the mat than I do on. You know. Sure. Like, sure. So, and it's just for those moments when you're on the mat. You know? So, so it was a screama that you went to Worlds for, and you've yeah. won Worlds how many times? Three times. Three time so World Champion. Twice. One, one was for single stick. Okay. One was for double stick, and then the last one was for. Um, like open forms. Sure. So that I use the sword because, you know, Dude. swords are just awesome. Because that's badass. <laughs> so. Dude. Three-time world champion is a pretty yeah. cool title. So. So so run run me through this. It's your first time. World champions. You made it this far. You beat people. You're like, all right, it's time to go. And then you get up to the ring. What is, what is going through your head at this point? Pretty much just like all your training, but at the same time, like nothing. Yeah? Because it's just like, it's like you... You've trained, you've prepared, but at the same time, it's kind of like autopilot. Sure. You know what I mean? It's just like, okay, I'm here. It's time to handle like, some business. Yeah, you know, yeah. like I remember like just, you know, sometimes I'll just play music in my head. You yeah. Because, like, you know, when you're working out, you have music, and it's just like, well, I didn't have any music. So, like, sure. I'll just sing it in my head as I'm doing my thing. That's awesome. Um, so, you know, it's just fun. Um, and, you know, I, I remember – not my match, but some other guy's match, and he was just kind of like a wild card. And he, like, <laughs> got done with his match and was just, like, ripped his helmet off. He's like, this is awesome! <laughs> He's just like, I get to hit people and win stuff? What? <laughs> you know, like, and it's kind of that feeling. You sure. Know? Like, and there's a lot of respect to the person you're fighting. Like, sure. But when you're in the ring, it's like, well, this is my ring. Sure. Like, how'd you get in here? Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, Exactly. So it's a lot of fun, though, you know, and like before and after the fight, you know, everyone, you know, bows. We really respect each other, but it's just like, but let's see how we do. You know? Yeah, which is, I think, you know, one of the most important things that differs 
martial arts from a lot of combat out there specifically yeah. is the the level of respect and the fact that martial arts is very it's calm surprisingly calm yeah you know mentally like i've seen you i mean you've seen real fights i'm sure you know school fights everyone's so raging you know that oh it's not sure. it's not even a thing anymore there's no respect at all it's just animalistic it's anger you know, you know? yeah 100 yeah, percent. <laughs> and there are people that are like rage fighting is that I mean, I don't know about you. They're not that hard to fight when you know something. It's pretty easy. Yeah. Because they're just swinging like gorillas, and <laughs> you can redirect that, and you can handle some stuff real quick. For sure. But that's really, really cool, the sportsmanship in martial arts competitions specifically. I've never competed, but here you talking. I've seen competitions. The fact that there is that respect when you get into the ring. You know, it's not like a bunch of trash talking, a bunch of garbage and all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Which is really, really cool. It is, and you know that's like one of the things I I think that drew me to it was was the respect. You know, like I've seen, like I did wrestling for a while um, when I was in Illinois, and I just wasn't a big fan of it because you know like um, like a lot of the like varsity level people would just pick on people, and it's just like that's not you know you're not teaching them anything, you're just being a bully. For sure, you know? for sure. Um, but martial arts with it, like it's like I'll knock you down, but let me help you up. Exactly. You know, exactly. and that's kind of like the mentality of it. You want people to learn, and I think one of my like favorite stories just from being a martial artist is me like, um, you know, I helped this one young man, and he like came to the school. He was doing because at the time we were doing like uh, hyper martial arts, which was like the tricking and all that stuff. Sure. Um, and he, his dad signed him up for, like through the park district, I think, and he came to the class and like he'd never done a sport in his life. Sure. You know, and he was doing the class like, and he couldn't kick probably any higher than his shin. And, you know, all the other kids were kind of looking at him. And I was like, no, you guys, like, focus on you. Sure. You know, and I'm working with him, you know. Right. Um, and he just gave it his all. And I swear I thought he was going to quit after that day because he looked like he was just really struggling. Sure. You know, the next day he comes back, his, his dad's, like, all smiles. He's just like, you know what? He wanted to ride his bike here today. He's yeah. like, I got to get my legs stronger so I can kick high, you know. Sure. You know, for Instructor Bill, you know, like, I got to do it, you know, because I was encouraging him. You Absolutely. Know? And I was like, no, you got this. Like, you know, lift your knee. The higher your knee goes, the higher your kick's going to go, you know. Like, just, sure. you know, that's all you got to do. Just focus on that. Um, and, you know, every time he'd come back, he'd be like, okay, well, like, I want to ride my bike or I want to do this or I want to do that. And, like, slowly he progressed, progressed and got better. Sure. And this was, like, right before I came down here to Florida and, like, um, this was probably the week before I left here, and, like, it was going to kind of be, like, a little farewell. Right. And, like, his dad, like, pulled me aside and was just like, you know, like, I want to thank you. He's just like, you know, my son has opened up more than he's ever in his life. He's yeah. more athletic now. He's, like, he pretty much told me his son worked with, like, two occupational therapists before he came to martial arts. Dude. And, like, I've done more for him than they did. That's and, so cool. And, you know, cool. just to hear that, like, I was so touched. Sure. You know, like, and, sure. and I'm pretty sure he's still there training, you know, and, you right. know, and hopefully he's passing on that lesson of, you know, like, well, now let me help people. And, and like, to me, that means more than, like, my titles or trophies or sure. you know, just helping people and, like, helping them be the best them they can possibly be. Absolutely. You know, and, like, this kid, he was awesome. His name's the Ethan. Hey, Ethan. Hi, Ethan. <laughs> Congrats. So. Keep doing what you're doing. That's awesome. That is so cool. And that's, like, the... the like you said, you know, that's more important than the titles are more important. Exactly. That's an actual difference. Although the title's pretty cool. The title is pretty <laughs> cool. I mean, that's what co I think that's what got me the audition for Power Rangers. Really? Yeah. I, you this, know, that just having that title, you know. The perfect segue. You know. Okay. <laughs> Power Rangers. You were trained by a Power Ranger originally. The Power Rangers is what started you on this. Who's your favorite Power Ranger? Oh, Tommy's probably my favorite for yeah? sure. Yeah? Green know? or white? Ooh, I like green. Yeah? Yeah, I, I thought he had, like, just, like, a cooler look. Like, he's green and gold to me is just, like, such a cool, like... I mean, he's a dragon. Yeah. He's pretty cool. You know? I'm white all day, man. Oh, really? I, ha I have the White Ranger uh, decal in my car. Dude, that's awesome. Because uh, cause the green, you know, he's this crazy bag. He beat all the Power Rangers. Oh, You're yeah. like, oh, dear God, and he's got a dragon sword. But when he went white and he's got Saba and, like, dude, it's a white tiger. Oh, For so sure. Cool. I so like cool. them both, but I think, like, the original is the one I like Green's hardcore. Best. Yeah. I mean, dude, he showed up and beat all the Power Rangers. Pretty much. <laughs> like, and then became a Power Ranger <laughs> as the leader. Like, Well, I'm pretty sure best. he was supposed to originally, when he lost his powers, right, right. he was supposed to be off the show. But really? since all the kids were crying that he was off the show yeah. and all the moms kept calling, like, Fox Network, they brought him back. Because do you ever remember awesome. the show VR Troopers? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Okay, well, he was slated to actually be the guy in that. Really? And the guy who played the head VR Trooper was going to be the White Ranger. So what they did was they flipped him. Huh. So it was really interesting. 
That's really But it kind of cool. worked out in their favor, I think. Because sure. I think if they didn't do that, it wouldn't have been as big of a success as it is today. Sure, sure, you know? sure. So, but for me and the Power Ranger thing, I remember it was just so crazy. Like, How um, did that start? How did you, how did you come across an oh audition to so be in Power Rangers? You know, kind of like everybody does, I guess. Uh, I was studying for a biology test at 3 <laughs> in the morning, you <laughs> of know. Of course. Um, and I was just exhausted. I was just like, you know, I need a break. So I was just kind of surfing the Internet. And on Facebook, I saw, like, like open casting calls for Power Rangers, you know. Yeah. And then I was just like, huh, like, I don't know. Like, this, I could do this, you know. Like, I have the talent. You know, I haven't acted in a while, but I feel like I could do this. You sure. Know? So what I did was I watched, like, an older episode of Power Rangers, and I, like, fast-forwarded it all the way to the credits. I found who the casting director was. Beautiful. You know? <laughs> and then I, like, was just searching all over the Internet, and I found her email. So I Dude. sent an, an email to my mom, and I was just like, hey, mom, like, I found this. I sent her the link that it says, okay, we're doing open casting calls. And then I sent her the email, and pretty much was just like, you know, like, I think I could do this. And, yeah. like, I sent her the email, and I went to bed. It was, like, 5 o'clock in the morning. I had to get up for, like, an 8 in the morning class. So I got two hours of sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so I pretty much, you know, after my class and my test, I, I called my mom, and I was like, hey, so, like, what did you think? Did you get my email? And she's like, yeah, we already got you an audition. I'm like, what do you mean? It said that, like, casting call was closed, you know? Yeah. And she's like, we sent them your stuff. We had everybody from your dojo write letters about you and send them to her. We've had, Dude. like, all these things. And I was just like, you did that in, like, an hour? Yeah. Like, <laughs> There's <laughs> like, no time. man, you're my manager now, you yeah, know? Yeah, really. Um, you know, momager. <laughs> yeah. So it was just pretty cool, and it was pretty crazy. Like, what I had to do was, like, I had to, like, take pictures, like, in my dining room of, like, a he quick headshot. And then sure. I think the next week we did, like, real headshots. Um, and I sent them like a little demo of like times I've competed or fought and stuff like that. And she's just like, oh, like, you know, he's really cute. Like he's handsome. I think yeah. he could be you like, do look like a Power Ranger. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going for since yeah. I was about three. So. Yeah, your genetics just kind of made a Power Ranger. <laughs> but pretty much they said, you know, like fly him out of California. We'll, you know, we'll include him in this round of auditions. So I did that. Um, I went. I was so nervous because we all ended up being late. Because, oh like, we were, I think we were in Arizona because that was, like, our connecting flight. And the airport got shut down because, like, a drone flew overhead. <sighs> and I guess, like, I think the president might have been there at the same time or something. And they were like, okay, well, we have to shut the airport down and, like, all the security sure. things. So we ended up, like, I ended up getting there to the audition, like, an hour before the audition. Like, in L.A. Oh, boy. Plane landed hour before the audition. I was, like, no sleep. Sure. So, and, like, pretty much, like, it was just it was fun, but nervous, you know, I, like, I, I wish imagine. I would have started it and did like, when they had like the demonstration part, I wish I would have done that first. Sure. Cause I feel like that would have got me like pumped to yeah. do like, the lines. And I was like a little shaky in my lines, but they still liked me cause of my talent. Right. You know, absolutely. Um, and they just said, you know, like, all right, next time, just like, you know, just relax, you know? And I was like, yeah. yeah. And I just, the next time I came in, well, before the next time I came in, I remember my stepbrother, we were like, we're sharing a hotel room and like, it was funny. Like, he was like sleeping and I was sleeping and then all of a sudden I hear him just screaming <laughs> and like he, he's just like like turn off the lights and I wake up and I'm like the lights are off I'm like what's your problem man like I have an audition and he like woke up and he's like oh sorry like I was having a nightmare you know <laughs> no. I'm like I got an audition in the morning you're screaming I'm like come on guy you know it was just so much fun and then the next time like I went in like I think I was like the first one in um to the audition and pretty much like I was talking to like another casting director who was casting for something else and he was telling me how cute he thought my casting director was sure so i kind of played <laughs> off that i went in there i was like yeah like i think he's got like the looks for you and I, like you know yeah and i was like telling her about how like the first audition like our plane got delayed and like all this other stuff and sure um i remember i was talking because one of the rangers the current rangers was on in the room really yeah so i was talking to him and we were just talking about how like people rip their pants during these auditions all the time oh sure i was talking <laughs> to him about those like chuck norris action jeans and yeah so he was pretty cool um and then i did my thing again i th i think i had to remember like like at this point like five different scripts dude and it was just like None of them had to do with anything with Power Rangers. Of course. It was more <laughs> like like flirting with a girl or being a jock or being a nerd or, you know, sure. stuff like that. Um, and because, I mean, that's really what they do. They take the footage from Japan. Yeah. So you don't really have to worry about being a Power Ranger, right? Yeah. You're kind of playing a character within Spoiler a stereotype. Spoiler alert. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know? Even though I could probably, you know. You could totally do Which would be fun. It. Yeah. Um, but it was cool. It was a lot of fun. And then I, after that audition, I made it to pr producer callbacks. I met Dude. Chip. He was an awesome guy. Dude. He's a producer of uh, Power Rangers, and I think he's probably doing something with the movie, too. 
Right um, on. But he was really cool. He really liked me. I kind of came in, and I felt bad because, like, um, there was, like, these two guys sitting with me during the auditions, and, like, one guy, like, you could tell, like, he's like, yeah, I used to do, like, XMA. Like, you know, <laughs> like, it was just kind of like, I did it for, like, a couple weeks, whatever. Yeah, you know. And he brought, like, a real sword. Like, Dude. real sword to the audition. Um, for me, I bought, I brought like a competition sword, which is like lightweight aluminum, makes it look flashy and all this other sure. stuff. And, and like he went in there with like, you know, like you go to like the mall and like they have like those Asian markets where you buy like the sword. Like he came in with one of those. Oh. You know? like, so it was pretty funny. Um, so he like, and then there was another guy who was like really good. His name was Wes. He's like a big Kung Fu guy. Um, and I just saw him in a, f- a magazine a few, few uh, months after that. And I was like, whoa, that was a guy I was like auditioning with. That was really cool. Sure. Um, so like the, the first guy goes in, he comes out, you know, he's all smiles. And I think he said something about hitting a ceiling tile with the sword or something. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, God, guy, come on. <laughs> um, and then I went in. And I pretty much just talked to the producer, kind of gave him my backstory. Sure. Told him I just did Frank. Like, yeah, he was like my first, like, kind of quote unquote sensei, you know. That's yeah. what kind of got me into martial arts. Um, and pretty much just like we really talked a lot about like the show and the different directions it would go in and um, he was kind of talking to me like about red and gold and mm-hmm. he was saying more gold because the gold ranger does archery and that's another thing I do is archery I teach archery as well dude um, so it was it's a lot of fun it was a lot of fun ultimately like I I did like my routine and they're like yeah like we'd like to, like can you wait like another we're gonna take this other guy because he's the last guy but then can you come back in and I was just like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> what do so, you like, mean? I'm waiting out there. I've, like, I probably, like, talked so much. Like, my throat was, like, so dry. They're like, we'll get you a water. Because they yeah. could tell, like, you know, like, cotton mouth over here because I talk so much. Sure. Um, so I'm sitting in the lobby. And then this guy comes out. And he's, like, a really good martial artist. Like, really? His, his thing is performing. Like, that's his thing. Sure. Like, for me, it's kind of a combination of performing and fighting. Sure. So, like, he comes out. And he's just, like. I'm like, hey, how'd it go? And he's just like, well, they just kept asking me questions about you. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, like, sorry. Like, what do I say to that? You know? Yeah. Um, but he's still like, I'm sure did a really good job. And I think that wasn't his first audition either. Like, he'd sure. been trying because I think he lived in the area. Oh, okay. Um, so then, like, I went in. I read another, like, read for them, like, another script. And then after that, they were pretty much like, okay, like, well, we'll call you. Um, and then pretty much, like, that's how my auditions went. Dude. And then I was pretty much like, I kind of got the, after Eagle News, because like, so this is a whole nother thing. Like, yeah, sure. So before I left for these auditions, um, I did like an interview for somebody at my college, FGCU. Okay. And pretty much that interview was supposed to be more for like, and this is what he said, was for like a class project, like a journalism project. Right. Well, like as soon as I started doing more and more auditions, then they were like, okay, well maybe we can put this in the Eagle News. Well, unfortunately at this time, like they wanted the roles and the people that were auditioning to be like anonymous, uh, you know, kind of like Star Wars. Yeah, you know, yeah, where absolutely. Like, you didn't really know who was gonna lot. do what, you yeah, know? For and sure. that's really, they wanted the hype to build up. For sure. So that's pretty much how it went. And as soon as that got released through the school, Right. First, they released in paper, and then they released it online. And at this point, a lot of the fans were just like, "Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be?" You know. Right. Um, and then after that, they were pretty much just like, "Well, we can't use you now." No. Yeah. Because what? like the fans ran with that and just kind of ran it all the way to like them, to the producers, and it was just like they're like, ah, "I can't use you now. Sorry." No. But I do remember him saying like, "You know, if you ever want to do like stunt work or this or that, just contact us and." But at that Dude. point, I was just like, ah, oh, no. That you know? sucks. But it was still a great experience. I mean, for sure. You know, sure. like. Oh, man. Even, like, for me, because, like, during my downtime when I was waiting, because I, I went back to Chicago to wait instead of Florida because it's a lot closer to California, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, I would just, like, be talking to the kids, and, like, they were like, so, like, what was your audition like? And we'd be, doing like, doing martial arts testing. I'd be like, this. Like, there's a table. You have to perform. Like, that was it. Yeah. And honestly, like, martial arts really helped me do an audition, really. You Absolutely. Know? So it was still really cool. Like, I know I inspired a lot of the kids that, like, I teach and have taught. And even sure. some, like, you know, my master always calls me. And he's like, so when's the legendary, you know, Will Porter coming back, you know? Because yeah. all these kids are telling stories about me. And it's kind of like telephone. And it's sure. just like the story keeps getting bigger and bigger. Right. And it's really <laughs> funny. Like, I'm going to come back, and I feel like I can't come back now. Yeah, really. Because I can't live up to, the hi- like, the yeah. hype, you know? He had lunch with all the Power Rangers at once. It was great. Yeah, <laughs> you know? So it was still a fun experience. And like I said, like, that kind of, like, 
made me want to get more into it and you know like sure. like to do like the stunts and stuff but like the directing and like i think yeah. film and like entertainment it's like a business I, 100% you know it's it, more it so a business, business than anything else and you have to like if you're going to like write a script or you're going to direct or you have to know like okay how does the camera work how does the lighting work how exactly. am i going to budget this how am i going to like okay rent that space for time how yeah. and i think for me like that's really what i'm looking to get out of my new internship Oh, okay, you know? cool, cool. So, and you know, but the Power Ranger thing, like, I still think, like, I, you know, like, I'm really happy because that was a goal. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah I mean? absolutely. Like, even if it was, like, my five-year-old goal. Yeah, You know, dude. like, when I was five. Those are the best know, kind of goals. <laughs> I was just, like, you know, I'm like that kid who's, like, I want to be an astronaut, and I came that close. Yeah, you, for you know real. I mean? You went to space. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you just didn't have the clearest coast to land. Exactly, you know, but yeah. it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it'll 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 come back you around. As you land, you land, right? Yeah, <laughs> it'll come back around. That is crazy. I figured it would be like, because uh, obviously I haven't heard the full story. Uh, I figured it'd be like everything else with the auditions. Like they said, they call me back and they just didn't. Yeah. But no, dude, you had you tasted the fruit. I did, and that's and cool. Unfortunately, like I still don't even know what color. You know, like, yeah, yeah, they yeah. were even like thinking of me being, but you know, right. I know they talked about red and gold, but. Like I said, it just you know, one bad interview can kind of you know, know. do something to you. You know what? Um, what iteration was it? Uh, Dino Dude. Charge. So it was the Dude. latest. Yeah. So that That's would have been cool, but and now they're doing the movie. So I was about to say there will be more. I uh, yeah, you there know, will be, there's always I'm opportunity. Into the business now. So exactly. We'll see. Maybe I'll end up being a producer on it or something. Dude, Who knows? there's no reason why I can't. I you don't know? think there's not. That's anyway, so. that's a big thing that I'm learning with. Uh, I mean. The first decision I ever made in life that I remember was to be an actor. I remember at like three years old, I was like, I want to be in movies. And now like with Tethered, Tethered changed my life because Tethered gave me confidence, For sure. which is what you need. Fake it till you make it, you know. Pretty much. And with with the entertainment industry, a lot of it, uh, well, like 99% of it is work. It's yeah. hard work. It's, it's the difference. There are people who are not talented who are in a lot of movies. Yeah. Because they work, they make contacts, and they put them in their movies. Then there are phenomenal actors that can't get an audition. You know what I mean? I totally so, know what you mean. Uh, so with you, uh, dude, you made contacts. Oh, you got sure. in. You did it. You fueled the fire with your mom as a contact. Amazing. Yeah. An internship. You were on the way to where I can ride your coattails into Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anytime. Like, I've thought about it, you know. Like, you guys were an awesome crew to work with. And, like, um, I've, I've even thought about, like, if I ever put my own, like, little something together, like production company or call something, me. I would totally call you. Call I'd me. call Chris, Dimitri, Alex, Nathan, Danny, like, Bobby. Yeah. Like, yeah. all you guys. Like, For sure. I'd be like, yeah, like, they were so fun to work with. Like, why wouldn't I? Right? You That's <laughs> I have um I have a script of Tethered signed by everybody. Oh, yeah? And when I got them to sign it, I was like, sign this, and so when you get famous, I can pay my rent. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. But, no, that, that's my big thing. Like, Alex, Alex is going to be something. Oh, for sure. Alex is phenomenal. So when she gets in, I'm just going to be like, hey, you know that movie? They need the funny guy, right? Just call me. <laughs> <laughs> you were great in that movie, though. Thank like, you. You and Thank Nathan, you. I think I love the movie, but for my sure. favorite parts was, like, the interaction between you and Nathan. Sure. Just sure. because you guys were just, like, kind of just, like, talking, like, real. Yeah. We like, okay, but it's a business. You know, we yeah. really can't, you know, open up a store and not have any money. You know? Yeah. So, like, just, like, those real moments, I thought. Like, for sure. For me, that, like, made the movie. Thank you. Because it you brought, like, a lot of, like, heart, but, like, reality to it. Sure. You know? It was authentic. I've seen it twice now. <laughs> I've seen it twice. I saw it at the premiere. Well, I was so sad theater. I couldn't come to the premiere because I had, oh. like, some school assignment to It was do. insane. And I was just like, God, man, like, I really wanted to come. It was crazy. Dude, press, photographers, red carpet. Like, it was insane. It looked like insane. it. He, Chris did a really good job setting he it did. up. He did. No, he really did. He really put out for this movie. I mean, it's his baby. It's his first feature. People exactly. are going to look on it when he's like, oh, this big director, blah, blah, blah. He made this movie back then, you know? And then hopefully they'll be like, hey, that guy, Brian's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're pretty awesome. Thank so. you. Thank you. Your standards are very low. <laughs> um, but no, that is, that is really cool. Um, so you... Met Jason David Frank again. Yeah. How did that go? Pretty good. Like, and yeah. this was like before. So this was before the auditions. Really? Like, so that, yeah. those auditions were like very recent. Yeah. Well, this was like at a comic con is when I met. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. So like, I went to him and pretty much this was like after my world titles and like I was pretty much just like I was trying to go to him and be like thank you. Sure. You know, like you inspired me to be like a martial arts champion. You inspired me to be like an instructor. You inspired me to be you know. I yeah. want to be like a real life Power Ranger. You know? Yeah, I'm so, this because of you. Yeah, you know, sure. and I'm sure he gets that all the time. But, right. You know, like for, it was more like for me to be like, hey, like thanks. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And he was just an awesome guy. Like I got, I have like a Green Ranger helmet. And I was like, can you sign this? Dude. You know, I got him to sign it. Um, 
they, he gave me like a free shirt. We just talked. I asked him like, I think I didn't even ask him a Power Ranger question. I asked him because he owns a few martial arts schools. I was just like, what is one piece of advice you'd give me in opening a martial arts school? Right. And he pretty much just told me, he's like, billing. He's like, get a really good billing system, you know? Really? That way they take care of it. You don't have to worry about, you know, tracking people down for money and all this other stuff. And sure. He's like, call this number. He gave me a number. He's like, ask for Ned and tell him I, I talk to you. And I was like, oh, dude, that's awesome. What? You know? But now I'm in school, so I'm putting the martial arts thing. It's still on my brain. Like, I do want to do a school. Sure. I still want to travel. I still right. want to do some stuff. So I'm waiting. I'm it's kind you. of on the back burner right now. Sure, sure. You know? But it's there. Yeah. You know, that's you the know. thing. You can, life's big. You got a lot of exactly. options. Exactly. You know? And for me, like, I don't want to be one of those schools that, like, opens up for a year and closes down because I, I want to go on, like, yeah. a European, European vacation, yeah. you know? Like, Have you been to Europe? Not yet. I want to go. It's incredible. Actually, I was supposed to go um, to Italy for a, a world championship, but I ended up not doing it because of the Power Ranger auditions. Sure. So, and then it kind of like, you know, a little acid on the burn, you yeah. know, like, cause I didn't get it, <laughs> but it's just like, but it was still a really cool opportunity. Sure. And sure. there's always going to be another world. That's another the key. World. You keep moving. You so, keep doing it. You have Jason options. was really cool. You know, I talked to him for a little bit. Um, and then after that, like, and I think that would have been like a year after was like the auditions and stuff. And sure. I was just like, I could do this. Yeah, like, you know, absolutely. So it was just fun, and, and Comic Cons are fun. They're the best. You know? I go to a lot of them. I can tell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I've I've peddled cabbage here and there. That's cool though. Like, <laughs> it's it's very fun. It's good for acting. It's what's good. your favorite? Which one's your favorite con so far? Tampa Bay. Yeah. Tampa Bay is my favorite. Not because it's the best, but because it was my first. Okay. My first Comic Con. I was 14 years old. It was Tampa Bay Comic Con, and there were only like 300 people in a DoubleTree hotel lobby. Okay. Now it's like 60,000 people at the well, Tampa like Convention Center. Well, now it's a huge thing, right? Yeah. So that was my favorite for the sentimental value, and I'm a big Game of Thrones fan. Okay. And they get the best Game of Thrones guests. So I collect autographs. I just started that maybe two years ago. Okay. I was like, yeah, you know, I wasn't really into it. I like pictures better. I'd be like, hey, it's me and them, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I started collecting autographs, and I only collect Star Wars and Game of Thrones. Okay. So I have a, a large print copy version of the first book with like – I think nine autographs now of Game of Thrones people. That's Got a Star Wars poster with a bunch as how well. How many of them are dead? Game of Thrones, none, luckily. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, how many of them in the show that they yeah. kill off? Oh, oh, and the characters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like almost all of them. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. No, the actors, not yet. I was like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> no, a lot. I've got, do you watch Game of Thrones? I, I dabble because I have a few yeah. friends that watch it, like, religiously. Yeah, So, sure. like, I haven't watched it from the beginning. That's what I need to do. I yeah. I need to go, like, go back, watch it's from good. the beginning. And I've, I've, the episodes I've watched, though, are really good. They, Call Drogo is on there. Yeah. He's somebody that died in season one. I won't run the others, but a lot of the, actually, now that I think about it, out of the nine, maybe, maybe six are dead. <laughs> it's pretty, now that I'm thinking back on it. Uh, so it's worth more now, right? Yeah, right? Dead. It should. It should be. <laughs> it's like art. <laughs> it's worth a lot because of the names that I have are really big names. Yeah. But like, I'm this weird sort of fanboy thing where I was like, it's worth a lot of money, but I'm never going to sell it because it's mine. Yeah, you know, like, like that's your experience. Yeah, like. there are there are collectors who like action figures. I love mm -hmm. action figures. Have since I was a kid. I, I'm not a big black series fan. I like the three and three quarters. You know, you have his kids. They're real yeah. tiny figures. And I never understood keeping them in the package. Oh, I'd always want to play with them too. Yeah, absolutely. I get that. So some people, I get why they do it. It's because they want to resell it later. It maintains value. But I remember I went to Tampa Bay Comic Con actually. Yeah. Um, earlier this month. And I bought three action figures that were in the package. And I opened them at the con. I was like, I don't need the box anymore. It's in too much room. <laughs> and there were people watching me in horror. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> How could you do that? Yeah. They're, they the were figures. The value's gone down now. They were figures from like 1999. And I was okay. like, I think it's mine. I opened it up. And I was like, yeah, I got my figure now. I'll just put it in the bag. <laughs> that's cool, though. Yeah, that's what it's about. It's about experience. Like you said, it you know, live it. it and it, it's all about the stories. And, and you had the experiences, you know, you... You may not be a Power Ranger right now, but dude, you auditioned, you've got worlds, you met Jason David Frank, like you've done everything else. You I'm know? Trying. And it doesn't <laughs> and it doesn't mean you're not going to be a Power Ranger later on. There's always options. We'll see. Maybe you know? maybe I'll be the Green Ranger in the movie, who knows? Uh, right? <laughs> right? Dude, the options are there. And you're you're on the right path to do it. So le leading into that, what is your internship? My internship is actually it's kinda it's interesting because it's my mom pretty much is working on like an investment group, and all they do is fund movies. That is incredible. Yeah. Down here or up Anywhere. there? Anywhere. Anywhere. Wow. Much. Right now she's doing stuff in Atlanta and North Carolina, I think. That's um, the boom in place now. The one movie I'm probably going to be helping out on for this internship, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there's going to be many more like different movies, but yeah. um, it's called uh, Love Letters to Amber. 
Oh, okay. And it's basically about just like the heroin addiction that America is facing, like the epidemic. Yeah. Um, and it's it's basically just for that to like wake people up, and it, and Dakota Fanning is gonna be in it. Dude. Um, Christian Bale, um, John Voight. What? Um, I'm trying to think who else. A, f- a few others too. That I, you know, I'm insane. not sure what I can say or can't say. Sure. So it's kind of like. You yeah, know, I understand. Um, <laughs> and the actors have changed. You know, I think. They of talked course. about Al Pacino. They talked about um, Mark Ruffalo. But, like, you know, Dude. they've, like, changed. And, and so far it's been pretty cool. I've talked to the guy uh, producing it and doing just – he's kind of a renaissance guy, Frank Torchia, and, like, cool. really nice guy. He's just like, whatever you want to do, we'll put you there. You want to do post or pre-production, we'll, whatever you want to do, you want to be in it. Dude. You know, he's just a really, really nice guy. And I, for me, I, I enjoy that he's just an awesome guy. You know, That's he's really cool That's very to work important. With. But also, like, that the movie has a meaning. Yeah, like, it's, absolutely. It's, like, everyone involved on it, and, and Sylvester Stallone's involved on it, too. What? Um, you know, like, so it's been pretty crazy. You know, I am I think October 31st is when, like, I actually go out there and, like, start doing stuff. Dude. But, um, we'll see. You know, it's, it should be big, but like I said, I'm not sure what I can say. Yeah, can't for say, sure. You That's know. in Atlanta? It, it'll be in Atlanta, and I think maybe filming in a few other different places, okay. like Louisiana too. That is so cool. So, so we'll see. And, and like I said, like you know, I want to get like in the business and like start doing my own stuff. That's the way to go, so and that's the greatest contact to have because that makes your mom one of the most important people in the industry. Well, I have to laugh you know? too because she was like, I guess she was talking to Fifty Cent too the other day. What? I swear <laughs> to God, she's like all over the place with her like investments and different stuff, and I had to laugh because like. She, like this was like the introductory call for her talking to him like because yeah. he wants to invest in something and um i think he's like producing a new song or something and it, the funny thing was like she's like pulling in the garage like i'm sitting in the back seat like she just got this new golden retriever puppy he's like probably like maybe eight months old right now yeah um and like this biker comes like rolling down the street well my stepdad opens the door right the dog just takes off Oh chasing no. this biker she's on the phone with 50 cent she's screaming <laughs> beans beans get back here you know yeah like 50 cent he's like what'd you call me you know like so it was just funny she's just got a really interesting life too you know like um she's an amazing businesswoman like you know my biggest fan and like i yeah. said like a really good momager so. that's amazing dude what a thing to get into to go I from flipping so. houses to the film industry well you know it all started with me yeah i was about to say <laughs> you know, like i was like maybe you had a little something to do with that i, I kind of did because like uh i was like a two-pound baby Oh, okay. So, like, I had, like, a lot of medical bills. Like, they, I think the bank probably put, like, almost, like, a million-dollar lien on my mom's house. Dude. And, like, that was, like, when we were, like, not doing that well, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And what she did was she got, like, her credit cleaned up. She got the lien taken off. And the bank was so impressed with her that they hired her. You oh, know, and right it on. And kind of went on <laughs> from there. And then she just, like, is really good at networking and putting yeah. stuff together. So. That is so cool. I, yeah, I'm very impressed with her. She's, the stories, she's man. like a renaissance woman. So. That's, that's <laughs> one of the biggest reasons why I started this podcast was to hear, the, uh, where do you get those stories? You Just know what I mean? Live them. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> you know? that's so cool that like, the, you know, there's so many people in the world and there's so many different ways to do the same thing, so many reactions to the same thing. And like, what are the odds? Like, you know, you say you wanted to be a Power Ranger. Yeah. At like five, and then you work up, and then your mom gets into industry, and then you find yourself untethered. Then an internship, with a movie with Christian Bale involved. Like, what? That I is was so, so cool. Excited. Well, I think there's a lot to, to, not only writing something down that you want to do, but saying it out loud. Absolutely. There's a lot of power in it. A hundred percent. Because 100% you agree. you pretty much are just like. You know, if, if you just write it down, you can kind of just put it away in a notebook, close the, close that chapter, you know. But yeah. if you say it out loud and you're just like, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Sure. Like, you end up getting to that point where you're like, oh, crap, I'm actually doing this. For sure. You know, For sure. like, That's how did I get here? <laughs> that is that is me and Star Wars. Pretty much, I right? I mean, like, if, you, if you've heard any of the podcasts, I, I'm always like, I'll be in Star Wars. I say it out loud. It's like my thing. It's the holy grail of it. Even if I'm, like, extra number four in the cantina, you know, I want to be in Star Wars. And uh, I have a really good plan that I'll tell you <laughs> off air, <Okay. laughs> just in case. Uh, but yeah, no, th- that's absolutely true. There is power in writing it down. I remember I worked for. Do you know what Cutco is? It's a yeah, type of the knives. I worked. Yeah, I worked for Cutco for like six I'm months. I'm actually looking for some knives. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, the best and most expensive are Cutco. Um, and in it, our boss talked about there was a study done by like the. Forget the percentage, whatever percentage okay. of the most successful Harvard graduates, and what they had in common, and they all wrote down their get their what they wanted, like their goals. Ab- and yeah, stuff. above everything yeah. else. So like everyone, there's different varying degrees of success, but the most successful, every single one of them had written down yeah. their goals, 
And it's like I'm obsessed with bucket lists. Yeah. Big time. I have been for years. And I'm all about it. Write down what you want to do and then make it happen and put it out there and then work for it. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. That is so cool. But well, yeah, so cool. I mean, for me too, like, I, I had one of my masters, he ended up having me, like, write down a list of 100 things I want to do out of life. Yeah, and, yeah. And, like, he's like, okay, now narrow it down to 50. Now narrow oh, it down man. to 20. Now narrow it down to 10. And he's like, okay, now put them in order. What are your top five? Dude. And he's like, okay, now these are the things you're going to do. These top five, you're going to do one thing every day to reach them. You know? Yeah. And it's just, like, that, you know? And it's funny because it's like, I, I accomplished my top five. Yeah. You know? For sure. Um, so it was kind of cool. You it know, worked. It's, it's cool to be like, okay, check this off, check this off. Yeah. And it's like almost like, okay, well, now I have to have a whole new list. Yeah, you right know? on, man. And so we're young enough. Yeah. You know, you we know? got time. That's the good part. And ambition. <laughs> Ambition's the best part. And confidence. Like you, confidence. Like you were saying earlier, confidence is probably the biggest like key to anything. For sure. And at the very least, fake it till you make it. Yeah, act Just like you, you're confident, exactly. right? That's the thing. That's the thing. The best, the best acting I've ever done was remaining calm on the set of Ballers when The Rock said good morning. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, he said I morning. I was I like, oh, good morning. And then as soon as he walked away, I was like, oh, my God. That was The Rock. Yeah. I smell what he's cooking. Oh, it was cool great. Though. Would you believe we are at just about an hour? That is awesome. It goes by so fast. It seems like it. Right? I feel like we've only been sitting here for like 20 minutes. I know. <laughs> I know. But, dude, it has been great talking to you. Yeah, thank we met you for having me on. Yeah, thanks for coming on. <laughs> I was just like, That's I've happened. been listening to a few of them, and like, I have to like sign up for like one of the Vimo accounts, but it's just yeah. like, yeah. Like it's good. It's a fun little hobby thing. Just to it talk is. to people. You know? It is cool. I'm real big into podcasts. I love Chris Hardwick. Yeah. He's actually the inspiration for really? a lot of stuff. Is I've listened to the Nerdist podcast. There's... I'm pretty sure there's over 800 episodes. I've listened to almost every single one twice. Okay. Because I don't have a radio in my car, and I deliver newspapers. Okay. So I just binge the podcasts. And with it, he has, like, Tom Hanks on. He's had Tom Cruise. Wow. He's had, like, big-name celebrities. And I love it because he just talks to them. Like, you find out Tom Hanks loves typewriters. Yeah. He watches Storage Wars. And I remember... It's like real talk. Yeah, hearing, like, these actors that, like, oh, God, these people... Are people like Tom Cruise? Yeah. You have such an idea of who Tom Cruise is, jumping on the couches, you know, Scientology and all stuff. But like, it's just a dude that likes wa- likes watching movies. Yeah. And I was like, that is so cool to get that other side. So I thought about like, I know some interesting people, and I just like to talk to people, get to know them, and hear their story. And it's been great. I mean, three-time world martial arts champion is pretty cool. <laughs> you know? I think so. And you're playing your Power Ranger and all these things. Like, it has been great. So thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. And like I said, you guys did a great job on that movie. And thank like, you very much. If you guys ever do anything again, like Dude, call me. <laughs> I'm definitely calling you because I want to do something martial artsy and to fight choreography and everything. Okay. And I'm calling you. For you sure. I mean, I don't want to say you don't have a choice, but I will guilt you into it. Nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm down. Whatever you want to do, we'll do it. <laughs> now, where can people find you online? Online, you can yes. find me on Instagram. I'm Will Porter 24 Right on. Or you can just Facebook me, Bill Porter. <laughs> right on. Sweet, man. Thank you very much. And you know, I'll, I'm going to let you push the button. All right, here we Just go. Just press Ready? that one right there. Three, two, one, and we're out. Out.